So anytime you're working on a battery powered project, it's important to keep an eye on the standby current, which is the current draw from the battery when just sitting there all day long doing nothing. So in the case of motion sensors, this can, can be kind of challenging because the PIR or passive infrared sensor here needs to be always on watching the environment. So what I'm going to show you here in this video is a few different sensors, but specifically here, this one here in the white box is a super high performance PIR sensor hooked up to a trig board powered by a lithium battery. And I use these all over the place, like in hallways, uh, along staircases, you know, anywhere where I don't have a physical door and I want to monitor that, or even like a room that's barely ever used that if anybody ever enters, I would get a push notification immediately. So if we pass along this sensor, it wakes the board up, connects to the Wi-Fi, and sends a push notification out to my phone immediately within five seconds. So I'm going to show you all of this here, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first one I want to talk about is the AM312-based PIR sensor, which you can get from Amazon for super cheap. I buy these up all the time and use them. Uh, you see two for just about $8, and their low power performance is actually pretty decent. It's about 12 microamps, but let's actually hook up to it and see what it is. All right, so I've got the sensor hooked up to a trig board here, which is obvious. You know, the trig board has world-class low power performance. It's only pulling one or two microamps from the battery, so the rest of the standby current is going to be from the sensor. And we have this powered up from a power supply here, the OT arc, and you see a 3.7 volts, which is like a typical lithium battery. Uh, we are pulling an average current of only 13 microamps. So that's incredible right there, even with a super cheap sensor like this. And this will last probably, you know, many years, depending on how often it wakes up. So if we pass some motion in front of it, you see there on the OT arc, it, I'll let this go for a little bit. There we go, zoom out. And you see here it woke up, connecting to the Wi-Fi network, sending out the push notification, and did all of that in about uh, five and a half seconds there. So that's pretty good. And the average current even through that was about 40 milliamps. So there you have it. Even with a super cheap sensor, it is possible to get uh, very long battery life. But let me step this up big time here. So before I reveal the part here, check this out. We're applying the same voltage here, 3.7 volts, and you see it's got an average current of just about three microamps. That's right, single digit microamps from an always on PIR motion sensor. And if we put some motion in front of it, there you see it wakes up, trig board, gets the push notification out and goes back to sleep. So total time there, was about two seconds. Now, keep in mind, this is also using a different uh, type of system. This one with the AM312 was waking up, connecting to a Wi-Fi network, and then sending the push notification out uh, through pushover. This one here is set up to wake up and uh, connect to a local network here I have and send a UDP packet to, an, uh, to a gateway, and then that sends it out via cellular uh, network. A uh, totally different system, and I've also talked about that as well, and I'll, I'll leave a, a link in the description below on, on how to set that up as well. But anyway, that's pretty awesome. So sleep current is about 3 microamps. The on current average is about 60 or so milliamps, but you see it's only on for 2 seconds if you build the system this way. So you can just imagine what kind of battery life you can get from something like this. Now, of course, when you see three microamps, you've got to be really obsessed with low power and you're going to pay for it because this is an ultra high performance Panasonic PIR sensor here, which has a sticker price quantity of one from DigiKey of just about $34. So it's very expensive as compared to the AM312 sensors over here. So checking out the data sheet, you see the one we're using is right here at 2 microamps. Now believe it or not, they've got a 1 microamp sensor. And you can see it here, it's just like a, you know, a dollar or so more than the 2 microamp one, but they weren't in stock when I was uh, buying these, so oh well, I went with the 2 microamp sensor, which 
in the grand scheme of things, won't matter at all. But uh, they also have a 6 microamp version, which is kind of cool. And that one is, you know, $25 or so, so it's uh, significantly cheaper, but still very expensive as compared to the AM312 sensor. So you're really going to have to uh, want this in order to use it, but... Uh, there's all, it's not just about low current here. These are very advanced uh, sensors. You see they've got, there you see it, resistance to electromagnetic noise. You know, so you don't get all of the issues you have with these cheapies, you know, with them false triggering on you or, or getting into this weird death spiral sometimes where they just continuously trigger over and over and over again. Uh, so, so far I'm very happy with this. It's kind of one of those things you just set it up like, I keep this kind of just tucked into the, the stairway there and, you know, just set it, forget it. Probably won't change the battery for, you know, many, many years. Uh, so, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, let me just quickly go over to the docs page and show you the uh, the build here. So, as always, over on the Trigboard V8 docs, I've got this project documented over to the left here, Motion Sensor PIR. And I've got both of these. I've got the high performance option as well as the cheap option with the AM312. Now I really like the high performance option because these sensors um, have a full swing output, meaning they go from their VCC voltage down to ground. So it hooks up perfectly to the trig board. You see ground, you wire over to the ground pin, the output right into the sensor input here. And then VDD we can also grab from the sensor as well. And you want to watch your polarity here because a lot of these JST plugs, you know, are switched around. So look at the board and you'll, you'll see, you know, plus and minus there. And just make sure you wire it up properly. Now the AM312 does not swing all the way up to its VCC. It only goes up to like 0.8 or 0.9 volts. So you can't hook it directly into the sensor input on the trig board. You have to sort of do this kind of circuit, and in this example, we're hijacking the wake button pin. I'll talk about that in a second here. So with the Panasonic sensor is nice. I just used my standard 3D printed case that's available up on the Tindy store, poked some holes in it, stuck it through, soldered up a couple wires to the other end, you know, a JST cable there for power and the output, and then just one extra wire for ground. Wire that on over to the trig board, little tiny uh, 1000 milliamp hour battery, buttoned it all up, hot glued the sensor in, and I was done. And there you have it. You see, we've got the battery down in there, fits perfectly, trig board up in its tray. And we just stick the whole thing, button it back up, and there you have it. And you can just tuck that anywhere you want, and you're done. So we'll just quickly talk about the AM312 circuit here that I mentioned. So it looks a little complicated here, you know, we can't just hook it straight up to the sensor input like the Panasonic sensor, and that's because the output only goes to like 0.8 or 0.9 volts. That's not enough to wake it up from a sensor input. We could do it by adding a transistor or something, but in this example here, I just decided to use the wake input. And you see the diode here, and the purpose of that is so that when motion is detected here, we can wake it up. We have like one volt or so right there which is enough to wake up the trig board. So it's doing a kind of a, in parallel with the actual button itself. But when the PIR is just sitting there, no motion, it's going to have its output pin at about zero volts. Now, if somebody goes and presses the wake button, then we're going to have 4.2 volts right there, and that would be a dead short to the output pin of the PIR, which would damage it. So how does the trig board know if it was a wake button input or a PIR wake? Uh, well, as soon as it wakes up, it goes and does an analog read on digital pin, or not digital, GPIO pin 39, and it'll do an analog read there, and if it reads about one volt or so, it'll know it is a PIR wake, otherwise it was a wake button wake. And I do have this code here posted right here motion sensor code so it is a, a a slight change there to support the am312 with this wake button uh input but it's super simple so your choice if you want to use the super high performance panasonic sensor you're gonna pay for it but it is really cool and for something that you're just gonna set up set and forget you know, it's kind of nice having something that's only pulling three microamps. And by the way, I will make a, uh, a version of this supporting the AM312 using the sensor input with, with some kind of transistor 
or some kind of circuit, you know, so that it just makes this a little bit easier. Or, you know, at least what's nice about using the sensor input is that you don't need to use this, uh, the, the variation of the base firmware to detect if it was a button wake or a PIR wake. So anyway, I just wanted to make this video and show off this super cool sensor. And that was pretty much the reason I made this video is, was that I found this super high performance PIR motion sensor that I didn't even know existed. I mean, total current, three microamps, that's totally crazy. So anyway, hopefully you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.